Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best prize for their antiques and valuables. We sit them down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. A hundred pounds. No, 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 no. no. OK. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to advise you to place the same goods into auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Whitney in Oxfordshire. There's a great crowd of people here. They've brought along their collectibles and their antiques. They want the real deal. It's a beautiful morning and time to join the crowds who are flocking in with their antiques and collectibles. Over on James's table, David and auctioneer John King are on standby to make sure no one gets stitched up. Have you given up sewing? Is this why you're going to sell this? Well, I'm not going to mention my sewing skills, to be honest. But uh... <laughs> so you do need no. a machine. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what's the history of this old wreck? Um, this is um, something that's just been donated, bought into one of our shops in Oxfordshire. Um, um, who, who are you? We are um, a charity that deals in end-of-life palliative care. Yep. So we. Um, have hospices and um, going to do home care as well for people with cancer, Huntington's disease, yep. um, multiple sclerosis. So um, it's a very good cause. And incredibly you want, good cause. We need to give cause. you as much money as possible. Yeah, for this we need to raise as much funds as machine. possible. Yes, for this beautiful, <laughs> beautiful sewing machine. It is. It is quite a nice one. It looks to me as if it says the the Barrett or the Barrett sewing machine. It isn't one that I've come across before, but that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean it's incredibly rare. I have to say quickly. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I think this one probably dates from the 1870s. OK, yeah. So it's reasonably early. Yeah. I like the fact that it's, it's cast iron. Yeah. Um, and it's got its, uh, most of its original Japan painting on it. Yeah, this, okay. this gold stuff. Yeah. And probably a bit of hand painting on the bottom on these flowers. Mm. So in terms of the, of the finish, it's good. Now, John, you must have seen thousands upon thousands <laughs> of sewing machines in a lifetime of being an auctioneer. The only difference here is we have an earlier machine, perhaps the mid part of the 19th century. It's a piece of social history, I suppose. But what is it worth, John? You tell us. Well, I, I would put it in at 60 to 80, but I think this is a little collector's sewing machine. The market is very, very small. And I think my estimate's a fair estimate at auction. Our independent valuers think slightly differently. They say 80 to 120. I'm going to place my estimate somewhere in between, probably just under the £100. I'll get some money out. Go on, then. Let's, have, let's in, see the colour of the money. Bearing in mind that it's for a charity. It is, yeah. Um, I'd like to offer you 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds for it. Without more further ado, £80 has been placed on the table. You can close your mouth now, John. <laughs> Tell me what you think about that offer. I think that's a really good offer. Really good offer. OK, I'm going to go in and tell our seller exactly what our auctioneer says, and I think it's a realistic offer. So what do you think about that, Cheryl? Um, I think it's beautiful, like I say, I think a doorstop. Doorstop. <laughs> well, I think it's a lovely decorative item and it would look beautiful in someone's cottage. Make a nice lamp or... as well. OK. <laughs> what we've got here, I would say it's almost a museum item, uh, certainly a collector's item, not a great deal of money, and I would have said because of its condition, because of its decorativeness, it probably is worth close to 100 quid. You can go to auction and there is every chance you could get a little bit more, but £80 would seem to be a fair offer. So how... I told you, he usually costs me money. But... <laughs> <laughs> so how about £80 for the sewing machine and 20 for the cotton? <laughs> 20 for the cotton? Do you know, I, I could be a millionaire. I've got a box full of those. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll put another... 10 on the table. Another 10. So that's 90 quid, which I think will allow me a, a tiny profit. And you, 90 quid. So that's a deal then? That's a deal. Excellent. Yeah, well, thank, thank you. you very much for being yeah. here tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck with your charity. Thank you. Now, these two have clearly gone to puppy training, a very well behaved pair. Where did you get Daisy and Gert from? 
Um, they were my mother-in-law's, yes. um, passed on to my wife, and I'm here selling them on for her. So how long did your mother-in-law have these? Oh, a long, long time, because they were sort were of they on a previous, mantelpiece? Yeah, previous sort of All right. family to that. So from of. her mother and yeah. so on and so on. Yeah, they've gone a long way back. So why are you ruining it? Uh, Selling them off, the family treasures. It's time to sort of just let them go, I think, because... Have you got a mantelpiece? I have, but it's, it's a bit outdated for our mantelpiece. Oh, <laughs> shame. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Daisy and Gert. Yeah. <laughs> well, these, as you probably know, are Staffordshire figures. Right. They're called flatbacks, yeah. hence they've got flatbacks, yeah. right? These were made in masses. In, in all the factories in Staffordshire and they were done as blanks originally so when we say blanks we mean they were pure white to start with and then what happened was somebody from the factory would take them to somebody's house and all the home workers would paint them so you would have maybe an eight-year-old painting feet and a ten-year-old painting the spots or you know the grandma would be making doing the face yeah. so these were all family things right. um, and as I say mass-produced okay. so dated 1880 to 1890 that period right. fortunately some of the paintwork does tend to come off it all depends how they're looked after uh, and this one um, Gert here has uh, lost a bit of her um, work right lipstick, basically. But other than that, there's no chips, cracks. There's a little bit of crazing on, which is, you know, you, you get it in the clay. Yeah. And it's just over years that yeah. happens. There are also on the market many, many reproduction pieces of this. Right. These aren't reproduction. I, I, can, I know yeah. through experience, basically, they're not reproduction. But quite often you even have, um, you know, Staffordshire written on the bottom of it. They never wrote Staffordshire on the bottom of it, so no. don't be fooled by things. Right. Ten years ago, these were worth a fair amount of money. Yeah. It's gone like that, right. with, with particularly dogs, Staffordshire dogs. Right. So don't expect huge amounts. Yeah. All right. Uh, what would you do with some money if I gave you some money? Um, Mother-in-law actually is doing her garden up, so right. the money would go towards helping her do the garden. Plants or something yeah. like that. Yeah. All right. Get my purse out, see okay. what we can do. Ten. Twenty. Thirty pounds. Um, I'd like a bit more than that, to be honest. I know you would. Yeah. I know you would. Do you know, if we'd have gone back ten years, I probably would have put another fifty pounds on top of that. Thirty-five pounds. That'd get a nice rose bush. Yeah, it would. Mm -hmm. I reckon an, another five pound and you've got a deal. Oh, do I want to do that? Um, okay. We will do another five pounds, 20 pounds each for Gert and Daisy. So there's 40 pounds on the table, is that all right, Darren? That's fine, yeah. Okay, we've got a deal We've got that. a deal. Well done. Thank you. Over on Debbie's table where diamonds are a girl's best friend. Or are they? Tell me about the ring. How did you come to own it? It was just my grand's ring. So I was just left It was in your grandmother's yeah. ring. Do you know when your grandmother acquired Got it? No idea. <laughs> okay. Are you not wanting to wear it yourself? I've never wore it. No, it's just been in the cupboard at home, so. I have had a look at the right. ring. The uh, the diamonds have a bit of a problem. Two of them are damaged. It's something that, as a dealer, I have to seriously take into consideration. So I will make you an offer. Um, and you do know that there's always the option of going to auction. Yeah. 50. 100 pounds. No, no, no. Absolutely no, no. OK. 150, that's 170, and that will be my final offer, Pauline. No. Well, look, I seriously think that if you take it to auction, the diamonds, I think, will appeal to, to any young lady. It would make a super engagement ring when it's been sorted out. I look forward to uh, okay. seeing how you get on. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much for coming. OK. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I 
don't think those rocks made Debbie's eyes sparkle. So we head straight over to auction where the ring is about to come under the hammer of auctioneer John Kim. What's the idea if you sell it? Have you got something in mind that you want to do with that money? Yep. Come on, tell me. We're off to Las Vegas in September for my husband's 50th. So. Las Vegas? Yep. Does that mean if you sell this and get money, you could lose it all? Well, yeah. <laughs> or maybe win more money? That's it, yeah. Okay, £250 is the reserve. Maybe the estimate of £250 is a bit ambitious because of the damage, so we'll have to wait and see. It's all a bit of a gamble. Let's see if we can get it sold. £80 I'm bid for it. 85 90 95 100 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 210, 220, 220, 30, 240 I've got, 250 with you. At 250 pounds I'm bid in the room, at 250 pounds I'm bid in the room, are you all done at 250? OK, it's a good one. £250, take away 25 for your commission, leaves you with £225 to throw onto those gambling tame wolves in Las Vegas, to throw it away, or maybe to double up. What do you think? Are you happy? Yes, yeah, it's been a good day. Fingers crossed that she doubles it in Las Vegas. That is the real deal. Coming up... I don't really want to go back to that. So. <laughs> is this heartfelt plea enough to make James put his hand in his pocket? Find out after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the market town of Whitney in Oxfordshire. These next items can't be to everybody's taste, so yes. will Simon give them a second glance? Now, you brought in these glass lusters, Tina. Yes. What can you tell me about them? Um, they were my mum's, and she didn't really like them or they didn't go with her decor, so she gave them to me about four years ago, and they don't really go with mine. So, so I brought them here today to see what I can do with them. See what you can do with them? Yeah. Were they something that you remember seeing at home? Um, they were in my dad's brother's house uh, before they were given to my mum, um, and I saw them quite a lot as a child. Right. And, and are these something that you like yourself? No, I don't. Don't like them at all? They're not my cup of tea, they're not no. Your cup of tea. <laughs> I can understand perhaps why you said that, because they're probably not really modern taste, are they? No. This is, this is what I would call typical Victoriana. Quite often you'd have them on a mantelpiece either side, they come in all shapes and sizes and colours, these. Yeah. Um, actually, they are quite popular in a way today because I sell these to, um, believe it or not, to places like Iran and, and um, the sort of Persian market. For some reason they do like them and I can always sell them, so they, there is a market for mm -hmm. them somewhere today. There must be lots of homes in Iran and, and places like that where they've got them on the map. Yeah. <laughs> But they're not everybody's cup of tea, and I can quite understand that. Um, they're Victorian sort of opaline glass, uh, this sort of pink colour, and this enamelling here is fired on afterwards. Uh -huh. And they're called lustres because you've got these drops on them, which are a bit like you see on a chandelier or something yeah. like that. And I think they're in pretty good order, considering they're like over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. There doesn't appear to be any cracks in them. So really, it's just a question of how much, isn't it? Yes. Unless you don't like them, I don't have to give you very much, do I? No. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. I would pay you for your lustres 20, 40, 50 pounds. A little bit more? A little bit more. It would only be a little bit. No, that's fine. I'd take the 10 away and I'll put down another 20 and I'd pay you 60 pounds for your lustres. Okay. Is that a deal? Yeah. Thank you very much for bringing Thank them in you. today. I'm glad I didn't go home with them. <laughs> <laughs> I did have that feeling, I must admit. But I'm quite pleased to buy them, so don't worry. Thank you. With their old owner so pleased to be shot of them, what does Simon make of his purchase? Just proves there's a market for everything somewhere. Someone somewhere is going to love these, trust me. So we head across the dealer's hello, hello. den where James's next guest was a station master with a bowler hat. So how can he bear to sell his hat stand? 
Have you given up wearing hats? One doesn't wear bowler you, hats you, anymore. No, you fall in love with The station master's hat doesn't stand there any longer. No, 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 no. You, should, you could always start collecting hats and, and you know, use it for Have a display. hanging your display on, exactly. Yeah. Well, it was bad enough at work having a bowler hat for the Royal Train and one for special occasions and one for normal duties, so right. I don't yes. really want to go back to hats. No, so. no, all right, well, I can understand that. Did you, did you buy it or did you inherit it? No, it? Um, it came through the family. Yeah. Um, grandfather had it yeah. and my father. And, uh, yes, it's all been in use until probably the last 20 years. Quite recently, yeah. 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 I always think of these as being French. Are mm. you? I don't know whether that's right. I mean, the, one sees a lot of them in France. Um, sometimes you have a maker's mark or label on the back, but this one doesn't seem to have. So I'm, going to, I'm still going to assume it's French, because I've never right. seen... Because you see so many of them in mm. France for mm. sale, and, mm. and the ones that are over here seem to be brought over mm -hmm. by antique dealers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there we are. You've had it for a good mm. long time. Mm. Yes. Yeah. These, I think, are glass, aren't they? I must the little, admit, the I... little buttons, mm. which um, obviously are very smooth, so they don't mm. damage the mm. inside of your hat. Mm. Mm. Well, I think it's a very good idea. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, it's an interesting thing. Um, Sold lots of these over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, I sort of think I know what they sell for now, mm. which means that I sort of think I know what I want to offer you for it. So we'll get a bit of money out, right. see, what, see what you think. <laughs> um, I'd like to offer you 20, 40 pounds for it. Oh, I think it's worth it a little bit more. It is worth a little bit more, yes. Yes. Here comes the hat expert. <laughs> OK. What I can tell you is that the independent values in the auctioneer say 50 to 80. But I'm going to say the area that you move in, those Chelsea interior decorators, yeah. perhaps would give a little bit more. Mm -hmm. £40 is not a bad starting offer. Mm -hmm. It's a good interior decorator piece, that. Mm -hmm. Someone would find room in a bedroom, in a hallway. I would say to you, if you've got £50 in cash, mm -hmm. Not a bad offer. OK, thank you. <laughs> I think that's very good advice. OK. So I'll, I'll search in my other pocket and hope that I've still got... <laughs> there we are, £50, which is what I wanted to offer you. OK, how do you feel about that? Well, I would have thought a little more. Oh, just, just, so just, flexible, just a little though. bit more. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I thinking think, of those Chelsea uh, I know, I know. I, I don't actually want to give you any more for it. <laughs> so I'm going to stick at that. But you could right. try it at auction if you wanted to. What would you like um, to do? Try to auction. You'd like to go to auction? Like, yeah. a, like another right. day out with okay. David. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you for being here, Jalon. Thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you for your time, James. Okay, then, James. And I hope you do very well. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Too. We head straight over to auction where David and Valerie join the Duke. Now, what do we know about it? David, first of all, tell me. It was my great-grandmother's and my mother, who recently passed away, had consigned it to the coal box, ready uh, for making sticks. <laughs> the coal box? The coal box, yes. Yeah. And I said, that must be worth something, and <laughs> Mum said no. <laughs> if this sells today, um, am I right in thinking it's going to go to a prostate cancer charity. That is correct, at the local Churchill Hospital at Oxford. OK. Now, I'm also reliably told the auctioneer is going to forego his commission, oh, so there you. is no deduction. It's here now. There is a £50 reserve. Late 19th century beach, extending coat rack with ceramic tops. I'll just butt in here, if I may. Excuse me, sir. Can I thank you for not taking any commission uh, for this, because it's going to charity? So, Come on, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands deep into your pocket. It's going to a, a cancer charity. You know what you've got to do, and it's a cracking lot. There it is there, and I'm bid £40 for it. £40, I'm bid for it. At £42 anywhere. At £42, £44, £46, £48. At £48.50 we have here now. It's so right on the reserve at 50 exactly the same as you offered, James. £50 I have here. I'll add 20 to that, so that makes that £70. It's £70 I'm bid. Fantastic, John, thank you. Are you all done at £70 and away? You've just heard what the auctioneer said. He's going to add from his own pocket £20 on top of the hammer price of 50 and there is no deduction of commission. So we have a grand total of £70 in all. First of all, David, 
I'm very pleased with that. To say that it was consigned for firewood, when we moved my mother to our new home, there was no coal fire, so it survived, and it'll go in a memory to the cancer charity. Now, now you, wouldn't mind me, you wouldn't mind me saying this, because your mother passed away some time ago, and it, if she's watching up there, <laughs> how old was she? She was 98 and a half. She was 98. What an innings that was. <laughs> and I just want to bear a thought here. It was worth a few quid after all. <laughs> and, so, and so, fortunately, it didn't go on the fire. So, um, Valerie, what do you think? I'm absolutely delighted, and I know that she would be tickled pink, actually. OK. <laughs> so, on the day, we're saying the real deal with the addition of 20 quid from the pocket of the auctioneer is £70. What a great deal for something that was going to be thrown on the fire. in the dealer's den and those flowers look real enough to give you hay fever. You brought something very nice and lively for me to look at. Indeed, Tell yes. me where you got it from. Um, in Folkestone, there was an antique shop along the road. Oh, do you live in Folkestone? No, not now. I've oh, moved, but that's right. where I bought it. OK. And um, it just doesn't fit the house I've got now. It looks <laughs> nice there today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's rather pretty, actually. I mean, it's very... Summery, and I, I just love all these flowers. They're so pretty, and um, some of the little dewdrops. It's, it's quite a nice executed it picture. It's an oil, uh, an oil covered in glass, which is yes. very unusual because yeah. normally you don't do that. Don't do that at all. Very pretty. All right, I'll put some money on the table. Right. See where we go. Right. Let's try you with twenty. It's money. You yes, can smile. It's money, yes. Yes. <laughs> Sixty. Eighty pounds. Now that would buy you something nice That's and modern. I'll do. A little bit more would be nice. A little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more. So, would that little bit more do it for you? A little bit more than that. <laughs> oh, are you sure? Yes. Okay. Hundred pounds, Gay. Um, Okay, I'll take that then. You'll take yeah, it? Yes, thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you very Hope much. Hope you get something really nice. Thank you. Okay. After a good bit of bartering, how do the ladies feel about their deal? What I always say is what one person doesn't like, somebody does. So I actually like the painting. So I'll get the frame done up and it might actually stay in my own home. So I'm I really quite, I'm quite pleased with it. I'm very pleased with the money I received and I'm going to buy something contemporary and um, I'm happy what I've got today. Coming up, has Brenda met her match? How much do you think it's worth? I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly got you then. <laughs> Nearly got you. The haggling hops up. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Now over to James's table, and this next item looks solid enough, but is it up to the job? So you brought along a jelly mould, yeah. which I don't even need to touch, because no. I know it's a copper jelly mould. Yeah. So how did you get it? Well, I had uh, a house clearance to do, yeah. and this was in amongst it. It had a flower right. growing out. And you cleared the house? Yeah. Are you a bit of an antique dealer as well? No. Not really? No. <laughs> but you spotted it was a jelly mould? Yeah. yeah. And took it home? Yeah. OK. So is it damaged as a result of...? There is a little ah. tiny split on the let's, top. Let's have a look up to the light. Two, two, three tiny splits, David. Yeah. I know your sort. You're trying to pull the I wool over my eyes. I think it will still hold jelly. You think it will? Yeah, I think so. to, As long as it's set before it went in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem with any splits in metalware is that collectors object. Yeah. yeah. And I have to take that into account you know, yeah. when I'm making an offer for it, yeah. so, so don't be too surprised. No. But it has got some things in its favour. Yeah. It's got a nice Victorian registration lozenge on yeah. there, which means you can date it yeah. exactly. Yeah. Because these came in in, I think, the 1840s, Did these really? registration numbers. Yeah. And it was a, it was a kind of idea that everything that was manufactured should have one of these on. Yeah. And it would show the date when it was patented or invented. Yeah and the date when it was manufactured, 
and the yeah. class yeah. and the type. So there's all that information in, in the lozenge. Yeah. So there's it, another mark down the side, isn't there? There's another mark down here which says McManus's. So McManus yeah. was obviously the maker. Yeah. And then it says Belgrave and registered, number six mould. Yeah. So there would have been it would have been part of a of a series of yeah. this shape. Yeah. So that you could have lots of different sizes of jelly yeah. or blancmange or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So they look best in groups, you know, displayed on a dresser or yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, graduated sets look yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Before I put some money on the table, why are you selling it? Don't you want to keep it as a souvenir? It's just in a cupboard and we don't do anything you don't with it. With we it, don't no. like any jellies in no. it because it's too dirty inside. It is. It is. You haven't even cleaned it, it for me. It's a good me. clean. It does. Yeah. It does. I, I thought you might have done that before you brought it along. <laughs> right, I'm going to make you an offer for it. Yeah. And I've got to take into account its, its condition. So, I'm going to offer you 20, 40. I'm going to the other pocket now. 50 pounds. It's a good profit, isn't it? It is really. Yeah. But I'd like just one more blue one. Take that one away and have a blue one. I, you mean, blue I, get, one. I get to and keep this we'll one? Do a deal. We will? Yeah. You're sure about that? Yeah. 60 down. David, I'm such a nice <laughs> chap. Yeah. Well, I'll put another 10 on for you. All right. 70. Yeah. yeah. Are you happy right. with that? Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very Thank much, Ringland. What are you going to spend your profit on? I don't know. Oh. Just have to wait and see what the wife says. On Simon's table is a military honour. You. you brought in this medal today. Yes. Now, what can you tell me about this? Well, all I know, it belongs to my daughter. Right. And it was her husband's, and he passed away. A little bit. And she's found it, and so she wanted to know what it was worth, what its value. And, and what it was. Where, where, the origin, originality of it, really. Right. With the date on it, when seeing the date. It was um, given to the British troops um, who served in Egypt in a war which was about the uprising, which was caused by the Suez Canal at the time. Mm -hmm. And the, the sort of rulers at the time, who I believe were called Cadiz, um, a bit like sultans of, mm -hmm. of their time, yeah. um, awarded these medals to the British troops that served during this war yes. that went on then. So mm. that much we know about it. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, obviously, how rare they are, I can't really tell you. No, uh, any no. much more information about it mm -hmm. than that. With medals, mostly there's sort of a pretty set price for them, and mm -hmm. it's the sort of thing that the collectors that buy these, they record the prices of them and they refer to them, and it's a bit like you can look them up in, in an index and find out what mm -hmm. the last one sold for. So we've got a pretty good idea of what the value mm -hmm. is of this today. You know, before I make you an offer, Sylvia, just out of interest, what's your daughter going to do with the money? Has she got anything in line well, for it? We've, we've got a, she's got a disabled son. Oh, so see. it's for his benefits. So anything will come into hand? Very, very handy. Anything will come handy. Very, very handy. I would handy. imagine that's something where... Very handy. Oh, well, I'm glad you told me that, because I'll try and be a bit more generous Oh, lovely. Now. <laughs> right, well, I'll make you an offer for the medal. Bear in <coughs> mind, as I've said, it's not really it my cup of tea, but... No. I would be prepared to offer you. I was going to say 30, but what I'll say is 40 pounds, because of what you've told me, so I'll increase my offer a wee bit. Mm -hmm. You know, you might benefit more by trying the auction simply because mm -hmm. it might find a better home than I can give it. Mm -hmm. You're now faced with the decision of either taking the £40 or trying your luck in auction. So. Try, try the auction. You're going to try the auction. Well, I hope it does very well for you. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming in today. It's been Thank a pleasure you. meeting Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So we head straight to auction where the medal is soon to come under the hammer. Today, you've brought along your friend Valerie. Yes, I have. And is that a bit of moral support? Yes. OK. Yes, yes, well, you know, yes, some, I... some ladies do like to bring a little bit of moral support yes, on. Yes, yes, I do. Yes. OK, OK. OK, it's coming up now. This is the medal. It was thought to be a little bit rarer, I think, when we first saw it. Now, after investigation, the auctioneer thinks it probably isn't as much as he thought. So, mm -hmm. nevertheless, we've stuck with the reserve of £60. We just might struggle whether we'll get that or not. It's coming up now. Lots of bids on here. Um, £36 to start it. £38 anywhere, please. 
At 36 pounds to start it. 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 55. 60, I'm bid at 60 pounds. We're at 60, yep. we're at the reserve. At 60 pounds in the room, 65. At 65 pounds here now, you're all done at 65 pounds. OK, good news. Oh, that's good, yes. 65 pounds. We have got the commission to take off the 65 pounds. I make that um, 58 pounds 50 you'll be going home with. Yes, George will be pleased. Are you pleased? Yes, I'm pleased and my daughter will be pleased. Now, what are you going to do with this money? Treats for the grandson. Treats for the for grandson. Treats for the grandson. I'm sure yes. he's going to enjoy that. Sixty-five pounds under the hammer. Real deal. Fifty-eight pounds fifty. Not a bad deal. No. I was a little bit worried. No need to worry no. on this show. No, literally. Now over to Brenda's table, where this next item is right up her street. You brought me a very pretty little padlock bracelet. Yeah. And it's nine carat. I can see that on there already. So it's nine carat, and uh, where did you get this from? Um, it was my late father um, gave it to me. Yes. And um, it was his mother's, so it's my grandmother's. Right. So why are you selling it? I personally don't wear it, right. and my daughters, they wouldn't wear it. They just said they didn't are like they it. Are they into silver? Yes. OK, well, um, it's, it's a sweet bracelet, but it's hollow. You know that it's yes. not solid. And... Um, I've weighed it and it comes out about 28 grams. Yeah. So I know what the going rate is for the gold itself. Okay. But I'll tell you now, I don't scrap anything. So whatever I have gets sold on and not scrapped. Okay. Okay. It's probably about 1940s, 50s, that period. Does that sound yes. about right? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, if I gave you some money, what would you spend the money on? I would spend it on something, on another item, maybe a jewellery, which I would like and I would wear. OK, I'll get my purse out, we'll see how far we go. OK. All right. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 crisp £20 notes. What do you think about that? I think it's worth more than that. Right. How much do you think it's worth? I'll let you know. I <laughs> <laughs> nearly got you then. <laughs> nearly got you. <laughs> okay. One twenty. No, it's still more than that. One forty. I'm slowing down now. I still think it's worth more. I'll round it up to what I think I want to pay for it, and that's one fifty. No, another ten. <sighs> We'll change the 10 for a 20. OK, so have we got a deal at that? Yes, we have. All right, well done, Caroline. Thank Buy you. Buy something nice that I you're going do. to wear. I will, All thank right. you. Coming up after the break, Something's got David all steamed up. This is a collector's item which will be fought over in the sale room. Can Debbie stop this runaway train going to auction? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Whitney in Oxfordshire, where the dealer's den has been busy all day with sellers hoping to get a good price on their antiques and collectibles. All aboard, all aboard. Tickets for Newmarket, please. There's quite a buzz in the air about this next item. Tell me everything you know about it. Um, well, I don't know a huge amount. I do know that um, it was my grandmother's um, and presumably she must have received it from down the family line. Um, when she passed away, it fell into my parents' hands. When, um, when my dad sort of gave it to me, we did do some sort of looking up on the internet to find out what it was even, first of all. And um, it, it's just sat in the drawer ever since, really. So, so it might as well go to somebody who will appreciate it. So you do know it's a Vesta case? I do you know, know it's a that Vesta much. case, yeah. It's very beautifully hallmarked, which dates it to 1889. And it's made by maker Samson Morden, right. which is a very, very good maker. It's a, it's a train ticket, yeah. isn't it? Yes. The top is beautifully enamelled, and all this is hand done. Gosh, and incredible. what I, I love is the fact that the corner of the train ticket has even been snipped off in, as part of the detail. 
Another thing I will say is this is such a nice example of a piece of silver that discussing its scrap price is totally irrelevant. OK. I walked in it, I think it's very important at this stage. There would never, ever be a question of scrapping this. This is Samson Morden. These people made highly collectible pieces. This is a collector's item which will be fought over in the sale room. Think four to six hundred pounds. Unless there's a substantial amount of money on there, the auctioneer and myself will be rubbing our hands and we will be hoping for great things at the auction. There you, there you go. go. <laughs> so, let's get some money on the table. Okay. <laughs> There's 50. 100. 150. 2. 250. 3. 350. 400 pounds. Now, if you were to walk away with 400, You'd have to sell it for about 450. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think um, well, maybe we'll go to auction. I think on that. I think it's going to do exceptionally well at auction. I think it's a wonderful thing. And at the end of the day, I don't think you'll lose out, even if you bring it home in your pocket. But uh, somehow, <laughs> I sense that's not going to happen. So. I really look forward to seeing how well it does at auction and thank you so much for bringing it in and no, good luck. Thank you. Okay. How does Debbie feel about missing out? I'm just delighted I've had the opportunity to handle something as rare as this. Um, and it's been an absolute joy to, to have seen because I've never seen one myself before. A very rare, very collectible item, and I'm sure it's going to do well at auction. Before the competition, so we much. saw Lisa turn yeah, down Debbie's offer of £400. We head straight to the sale room to see if her vesta can live up to the hype. I think it's wonderful. I think it should sell if the right buyers are here, or on the telephone, or on the internet. The reserve is 380 It's such a beautiful thing. Is there a collector in this room? There it is there. Lots of interest in this, I have to say. Start the bidding at £400 with me. Straight away at £400. £400 with me to start it. Four twenty anywhere. At £400, four twenty. Four forty with me then. Four sixty. Four eighty. Five hundred. Five fifty. Six hundred. Yes. Six fifty. Seven hundred. Seven hundred. On a fresh phone call at £700 I'm bid. At £700 I'm bid. 750 in the room. 800 I'm bid. 850 in the room. 900 I'm bid. 950 in the room. Oh my God. 1,000 I'm bid. £1,050 pounds I'm bid in the room. Are you all done at £1,050? OK, £1,050. Just over £100 to go off that. <laughs> I make that £945. Happy? Very. Very happy. <laughs> very happy. <laughs> We're both very happy. That was a real deal. Cracking deal. Phew, a fantastic result there. It looks like David's enthusiasm was well founded. Now, all that's left to find out is how our dealers did. Simon got a cluster of notes for his lustre, which he sold for £140. Brenda hasn't managed to sell the Staffy dogs yet, but she says they're in good company. She's got lots in stock. After surprising everyone with his high offer, James still managed to make a profit when he sold the sewing machine for £110. And 110 must be his lucky number, because that's also what he got for the jelly mould. We just had a cracking result here in the sale room. Lisa brought along on the dealer's day a Samson Morden Vesta case with some enamel work on it. She turned down a tasty offer of £400. It's just brought £1,050 under the gavel. Take home, real deal, 945 quid. Wow! Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.